Hello guys, welcome to Inside Electronics. So today I'm going to show you something that I built myself during my college days for uh, indicating the current status of mains electricity. And this is a power failure indicator. You can build one by yourself. I will later show you the circuit diagram of this thing. And you can see I made it using a prototyping board and it's all just rough soldering and things like that. If I can focus on it see that sometimes you can see the soldering is not that uh, good at that time but it functions that is the main thing and the reason why I build this is because in my college in my college lab it is actually powered by the mains voltage most of the time but during the power failure we have a backup inverter and that is the actual reason why I built this thing also and because that inverter was a square wave thing now I believe it is changed to a sine wave one I don't know but back in those days it was a square wave inverter and at that time say we were making something that is sensitive to the uh, waveform and we were using like uh, the transformer based power so the linear power supplies back in those days not any SMPS kind of thing back in those days doesn't mean that I'm so old it's say it's like 2011 and 2012 period so I was using the transformer based power supply just because we had a lot of transformers and we had a lot of rectifiers module lying around and when we are making something say an operational amplifier or anything and we were using the transform based power supply and because during the mains operation everything works fine the oscilloscope will show the normal kind of uh, readings that we actually expect but the case change when the power actually fails and the inverter kicks into action because during those time because the inverter outputs a square wave at 230 volts that actually messes up the entire waveform see the square wave is what actually being fed to the transformer and the transformer also outputs a distorted waveform not a pure sine wave and that is what rectified and you know and that is being transferred to the board so usually we expect something from a not perfectly working circuit but when the inverter kicks into action because of the square wave nature of the current the actual output voltage the expected waveform the output act it actually messes up the expected waveform and things like that so to actually let us know that it is the power has failed and it it is now running on the inverter I made this tiny little circuit and though that inverter is actually a little bit away from the work environment so it we don't actually notice it has the LED indications but it, we don't actually notice that so we actually used this uh, near our workbench so that we'll actually get a audio active uh, audio alarm when things go out of control I mean when the mains fails so all it does is it detects the presence of AC mains through here and you can see it has very limited components it has a diode has an LED two transistors a buzzer and a huge capacitor and this capacitor is rated for 68 sorry 6800 microfarads at 25 volts now if you want to build one here is how you can make one yourself so I hope you can see that this is all it is let me show you this way so what happens is that I used it with a normal 12 volt transformer, the regular transformer. See, I was in my lab and we had a lot of transformer lying around, just a lot of transformer, say 50 or something like transformers lying around. I just picked one and used with this one. So the transformer is actually, the secondary of transformer is connected directly to these two points right here. And because it has a diode right here, it actually rectifies it. That is an added bonus because actually I was uh, actually I use this for you know polarity protection and things like that. But this actually doubles as a rectifier in case if you decide to go for a transformer. So that is that diode right here. And right after that that diode, 
there is an LED to indicate the presence of AC mains input. So there is a, if I draw it right here, it it will look something like this. So if I can, that is the transformer right there, and that is the secondary coil going right there. That goes straight to there, and there is the core, and that will go to that point right there. So this is AC mains and this is 12 volts right here so this was how it was connected in my lab so we basically we just plug it into an available port and what happens is that whenever there is an AC mains input it gets rectified by this diode to 12 volts and that indicates that makes this green LED glow so it indicates the presence of an input and this capacitor right here is actually a timing capacitor because this is needed to prevent a false triggering of this buzzer. I will explain that later. So it stores a little bit of charge in that capacitor also and that is that capacitor right there. It is a Keltron made 10 microfarad 450 volt rated capacitor. It's an overkill for this job but I got it salvaged from a fluorescent lamp ballast. So it's made by Keltron. It's a very reputable brand in India. It's a high quality capacitor. So that is a timing capacitor and then it goes to a 47k ohms resistor to an SL100 transistor that is that transistor right there and that is a 47k ohm resistor so whenever there is an AC mains available the 47k ohm resistor provides enough base current just enough base current to keep that transistor on and the reason why this diode is here is to prevent the capacitor from discharging back to the rest of the circuit so the 12 volt will get rectified again and that goes straight to this 6800 microfarad capacitor which is a huge value so and also at the same time because this transistor is on due to the presence of an input current it actually pulls the base of this transistor towards ground and being an NPN transistor pulling the base of this transistor to ground makes this thing turn off and when this thing is turned off the buzzer will not get any current flow and hence it will be turned off but still because the AC input is available it can charge these capacitors to its maximum value obviously the voltage will be low but it can store a huge amount of capacity and that is how this thing works when there is an input current now let's say the input is dropped the, there is no input voltage so there is no base current for this SL100 transistor and that is that is the reason why we need this capacitor right here because let's say the current went off and comes on just in a second you know just it was like something happened and it just triggered and came back on right at that moment itself so if without this capacitor that will instantly make this terminal off and being that transistor turned off will actually discharge this capacitor, huge capacitor to here and that capacitance that store uh, charge in that capacitor will not go beyond this point because there is a blocking diode and it is forced through this 22k ohms resistor to the base of this transistor right here which will turn that on when this is turned on the buzzer can actually will get connected to the negative of this uh, capacitor which in this case is acting as a battery so it's basically a buzzer connected across a battery which will make that thing sound so that is how this thing works so with this capacitor when such an incident happened when let's say the power went out and in the next instant it came back on so if without this capacitor that will instantly trigger this buzzer but now because of this capacitor whenever there is the power is failed for a second this capacitor will give enough base current so that it will not activate the buzzer it needs it will take around one or two seconds for this capacitor to get discharged through this uh, this transistor so it will give a two second delay before the buzzer will get activated so it's a false proof thing and basically the capacitance of this entire this capacitor 
determines how long the buzzer will sound and this capacitor the capacitance of this one will determine the fail safe period the false uh, foolproof kind of timing and basically that's the entire thing so this thing can be used for things like this so when the f mains is failed it will give you uh, an audio indication and also this thing can be used by electricians this thing will be very helpful for the electricians but for them they don't need this capacitor because say you want to you are dealing with the AC mains and you are dealing with the tripper I mean not the tripper what is that thing called the ELC with the circuit breakers okay so let's say you want to know which circuit breaker belongs to which room and usually what you do is you know make a people make a person stand on that room and let him let you know that when the power fails by when you are actually doing each uh, turning off each individual breakers so if you build one of these and if you just you just keep this thing plugged onto the wall and when you actually turn off the breaker what happens is that when the breaker is turned off the power for this thing in the room that it is kept will get turned off and that will initiate the buzzer and you will know that it actually rep uh, represents that particular breaker that room belongs to that particular breaker that is how you can use it for a, that is how an electrician can use it it will come very ha handy and you can find you, a lot of other applications you, uh, on your own so I built this circuit myself it's a really simple circuit you know you don't need a lot of thinking I, I built this thing myself so yeah that's it that's how you can build yourself a power failure indicator build one yourself and make good use of it so let me demonstrate this for you right now I'm using a cell phone charger right here so it's a 5 volt so because it's 5 volt the volume will be very low because this thing is designed for work with 12 volts and above so I'm going to connect the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. I'm just ignoring the diode because you can see the LED is glowing and that indicates the presence of AC mains and listen there is no sound coming from the buzzer. So if I let the charger go and af after the time period here comes the buzzer. And as I mentioned the buzzer is sounding really low that is because the 5 volt is not enough for this thing to work I think this needs at least 9 volts for its working let me demonstrate it again using a 9 volt battery I'm having a 9 volt battery right here so here is a negative going on here is a positive I'm just plugging it straight and you can see the LED glowing it is on and if I remove that it should come on any moment see hear that so it, this has no not enough charge in that anyways so that's how this thing works if you use a higher voltage right here you can you will get a very high output so yeah that's it